Good morning, Mount Olive Lutheran Church. Good morning, friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ. It's Pastor Mike here, and we are continuing in our morning devotions here on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. It, it says August in the calendar. It says August in the date, but past couple of days haven't felt <laughs> they haven't felt like the scorching heat of summer, have they? So I know that's kind of divisive. Like some people love it, some people wish the thermostat would be cranked up a little bit, but that's all right. It's a beautiful day in God's creation. It's a beautiful time, beautiful morning to dig into the Word, to keep and do our morning devotions. So my icebreaker question for you this morning is, do you have a song that you play when you're in a good mood? Do you have kind of a song that gets you hyped? Do you have a song that cheers you up? Do you have a song that you play when you're in a really good mood just just for the sake of it? Maybe you listen to 89Q. Maybe you have a song on like a Pandora playlist or a Spotify playlist, but I want to know what song or I guess what do you play when you're in a good mood? You can be on your way to the lake. You can be in your car after a really good day at work or just a day off driving around. So what's one of your favorite songs to play while you're in a good mood? What's one of your favorite songs that gets you hyped or gets you in a good mood? Respect, ah, that's a good one can't help but be in a good mood with that that catchy beat and everything I'd say I have a lot of them if I had to pick one for me <clears throat> if I had to pick one song that always kind of puts me in a good mood or just kind of if I'm in a happy mood and I want to listen to something happy I would have to say I'd have to say Boys of Fall by Kenny Chesney. That is just a great song. It's about high school football. It's about team building. It's about camaraderie. Yep, 89Q all day, every day. Yep, 89Q is in my truck wherever I'm driving, whether it's for church or whether it's just around town. Believe by Cher. Mm, that's a really good one. What a friend we have in Jesus. Mm classic you can never go wrong with that so church as you're joining us as you're tuning in uh, the question that I ask you is what song do you play when you're in a good mood to get you in a good mood or just what's your favorite song to play just because so you can you can leave that song in the comments we want to know we want to know what gets you hyped we want to know what gets you in a good mood and as you do that <clears throat> i invite you to pull out your bibles if you have a U version bible app on your phone if you have a paper bible or a hard bible in front of you go ahead and get that out we are relatively brand new in a new book so we started the book of colossians yesterday so we heard about Paul greeting this church, heard about Paul greeting these people. So the text that we're going to look at for this morning is Colossians 1 verses 3 through 14. And in this section, in this little chunk of scripture, Paul is hugely talking about two big things. He's talking about Thanksgiving and he's talking about prayer and how important and how great each of those things are. So I'm going to go ahead and dig in. So this is Colossians 1, verses 3 through 14. Paul writes, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth, 
just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. So Epaphras is basically a guy who is a church planter, and he got sent out, and he started this church in Colossa. And we hear that the word was moving through Epaphras and it was moving in the region where he planted this church and it's all focused on one thing and one thing only and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so we hear that Paul is getting this report that everything is going great and that Epaphras is doing the Lord's work and that the Lord is continuing to move and to spread his gospel in this region so definitely two reasons for Paul and for anybody getting this letter to be thankful and to be rejoicing in prayer. So we continue on. This is, I'm in verse nine now. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So we heard a little bit about it yesterday, but one of the biggest challenges that was facing the church in Colossa was a lot of people were running around and they were spreading all these false teachings. They, they didn't have it exactly right. So Epaphras kind of had his work cut out for him. He was tasked with starting this church and he was tasked with preaching biblical truth, the biblical truth that you and I know today. And that is there's nothing above, there's nothing else beside our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has ransomed us, who has who loves us, and who paid the ultimate price for us. So Epaphras is basically taking or his biggest challenge is to continue to preach that and to correct any false teachings that are being spread out there that maybe these false teachings lead away from Jesus. Epaphras is doing his best and he's doing the Lord's work and saying, nope, nope, it's not about this other thing over here. It's not about this other teaching. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus Christ. And so that's one of biggest Paul's biggest prayers is that this work and that this abundance, this work of the Spirit continues to abound, not just in Epaphras, not just in this church of Colossa, but in the entire world as well, and that this church may be faithful witnesses to that. And so now we're in verse 13. We're going to round it out here. He, being Jesus, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So like I said, the biggest thing that one of the biggest challenges was all this false teaching and a really big theme in the church, in the Greco-Roman world at this time was a lot of people, they didn't really have hope. They didn't have hope in the future or things to come. A lot of their investment, a lot of their time and a lot of their spiritual focus was on the here and now give me the best life. I need to do everything I can to make sure that my life now in this moment is as good as it can be. And Paul says and encourages Epaphras, there's more to that. And he's encouraging this church that there's so much more than just the here and now. There's the eternal. There's the things to come. There's the eternal hope that is laid up in heaven there is the hope of the resurrection and eternal life. And the only way to that is through faith in Jesus Christ. So that's a big thing in this book. And that's also, I think, a pretty big takeaway is 
that you and I can learn from today is no matter what's going on, to learn to pray and to be thankful to pray in good times and not so good times. So obviously Paul is really pleased with this report. He's really happy and he's overjoyed with everything that he's hearing from Epaphras and that he's heard of this church in Colossa and he gives thanks that God is moving and he also continues to pray for them for their success, for their faithfulness in Jesus. And that's something that you and I can learn from today is it doesn't really matter if we're going through good times, if we're kind of going through, you know, so-and-so times, or maybe we're in a bit of a rut. Maybe we haven't had a good stretch of days recently, but no matter what, we can always pray. We can always give thanks to where we're at because we know that the here and now is just that. It's here, it's now, it doesn't last forever, but God's love, God's word, and the love and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, that gives us hope, that gives us thankfulness, and that gives us power to live out our faith, and that gives us power and hope and joy in knowing that whatever happens in this life, our eternal hope, our eternal salvation has been taken care of in Jesus. And so church, with that, I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for all the blessings that you pour into our lives. Lord, I thank you for your word and for the the life-giving and the life-saving message that it brings to us and how that message is centered and focuses on your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer, who paid the ultimate price for you, for us, and for everybody in the entire world. You didn't just come to seek and save some people. You came to seek and save all people. And Lord, we give you thanks and we rejoice and we give you praise for that. And Lord, I just ask that you encourage us in your word and your love and your grace to live out our lives, to boost and to strengthen our faith and to draw us closer to you so that we can continue to build your kingdom, and that we can continue to share your love in all the world, in all of our communities, and all of our friend groups. And Lord, I just ask that you keep us centered in your faith, in your grace, and your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we are bold and happy to pray. Amen. Church, thank you so much for joining me today. We continue to move forward in Colossians, so I invite you to join us again tomorrow at 9 o'clock for our another round of devotions. God's blessings on the rest of your day, and I hope you have a great week. See you later.